Well, shalom, shalom, everybody. Welcome to H2HDI. My name is Elder Joshua Malara. Just want to greet you in the name of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Uh, if you were, yet yeah, last week uh, I spoke and I gave in depth about the name Jesus Christ, uh, how it meant Hey Zeus in Spanish, but Hey meaning behold and Zeus in Hebrew meaning the horse. So don't get offended that I told you the truth. I'm just here to evict the lie. Because if you seek the truth, you will be offended. What am I saying by that? The more you continue to labor and enter into the rest of our Heavenly Father, the more you're going to learn is that you're going to see your own soulish attributes, your uh, per, uh, principalities within your own being are leaving the, your personality. Because the Father is about to dwell and manifest within you more and more daily. There's a weight, a kabod of his name written on your forehead and written in your heart. He's going to change that stony heart that you have that's against his name. And he's going to give you a heart of flesh for his name. Amen. But I have a question for every minister. Uh, and I'm talking to myself too because before I can ever ask you this question, i got to ask myself this question. Have you ever, past, present, and even present right now to the future, have you ever ministered in the name of Jesus, believing you were doing a good merit or a good deed to the people, speaking the words of the Spirit, but yet when the word of the Jesus Christ was complete on a Sunday or whoever you were ministering to, you have you ever felt miserable? Have you ever felt, God, why do I feel so miserable? I just spent time with you, Father. I just spoke the kingdom to the people. I, you, I spent time with you so you can unveil the kingdom truths within me. But why do I feel so miserable after that? Well, I got to tell you something. <laughs> Here's why. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 warns us not to give the appearance of evil and this would have to include what comes from our mouths. Guile is deceit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Guile is deceit. So I've been praying and speaking in Jesus' names and behind that comes guile? <laughs> yes. Don't get offended that I say this. Write down, and I know it's tough for you to comprehend, but mind you, I was ministering Jesus Christ before I ever came to the, the saving knowledge of the name Yeshua HaMashiach. It, I heard the name, but I didn't comprehend it. And then finally, it was like a seed planted. You, if you guys uh, ever do a horticultural or you planted seed with your children or you did it when you were a child, you plant a seed in the in the uh, in the dirt and then you put compost or whatever nutrients that you need in order for the the dirt to be compacted for the sh outer shell to break and comes a stem that is the uh, seed form of yeshua because it's already hidden within you being manifested and unveiled through you this day as you continue to know who your savior is and i'm saying yeshua not jesus please don't get offended but I can see a lot of people who get offended because I tell them the truth. The name Jesus is not the real the name of the Savior. The real name of the Savior is Yeshua. You will argue, you will bicker, you will complain about it. Right now, I spoke, uh, not right now, but in past time, I spoke with Apostle and Prophet Robert and Virginia Gonzalez. And I've said there's going to be a fight that's going to take place. The name Jesus versus the name Yahuwah. That's going to happen in uh, going from house to house. And if you read the scriptures in the book of Matthew, how Yeshua sent his disciples, he said, go from house to house going in two. If they did not receive you, wash the dust or shake the dust off the off your feet. What is he saying right there? Because that house right there, their feet where they tread was food for the serpent. Meaning every carnality, every entity, everything that they believed that was not the Father was already implemented as the, uh, the food or the feast for the enemy. Cleanse yourself from that. Now let's go on. When we speak Gao using replacement names or titles in the name in place of Yeshua's name, we are breaking the third commandment and appearance of evil in our speech. We are circumlocuting uh, or talking around the name, but not really using it. 
what no, he knows what we mean. Have you ever gone and I'm talking to some of you ministers that have actually uh, are immersed in the name Yeshua. When we uh, present the name Yeshua to the people and even to the people that don't know, have you ever come across a stumbling block of people that say, well, you know, God knows my heart and he knows what I'm saying when I call his name, the Lord, the God. Well, if you researched here and if you watch the terabyte that has been uh, posted before this broadcast, I want to show you something. Apostle Robert Gonzalez has said by the research of what he has studied, what he has labored to come to know the name of Yahuwah. He came to know that the, the word God is a descriptive term. The word Lord is a title. So if you own land in England, you were considered a landlord. Those are replacement theology terms. Those are substitutes that are quite frankly not the same as the original Yahuwah. Moving on. Many say that they don't use the name the name because they want to keep from offending people. They don't mind offending Yahuwah. He knows their heart. <laughs> I said I said it before. I used to say that too. Well, I say the Lord and he knows my heart. Yeah, but do you know your own heart? Even David said nothing can uh, can come out of this heart. Only wicked and evilness can come out of the heart. Mm. I think I offended somebody, but I'm sorry. That's what King David said. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 27, which we say is the Aaronic priesthood, but reveals Yahuwah's name will be upon his people meaning up on. And if you've gone with us before, meaning it's going to come up and it's going to come on. Look at it again. Up from your spirit and on you, meaning you're going to speak his name. What name would that be? The Lord? No, because Genesis 4.26 says, and man began to call Yahuwah, Yahuwah, or man began to call this living entity Yahuwah. We learned that we began to call upon Yahuwah's name. There is one name given under heaven, Acts 4.12. Let's turn there. And I'm, I want to teach you this and I want to encourage you because to stay in tune with the triune, you're not staying in tune with God or Lord. In our outer court languages, we have used that so many times. But now when you stay in tune with the Father, there's a frequency, there's a mem, a water, a flow within the Father that's released when you say his name, Yahuwah. There is a refreshment. See, it's coming upon me right now. There is a refreshment of his name. You ever gone to your neighbor and says, I, I just need to talk. I just, I don't know. I just need one word, one word. Isha has said it here when we were eating dinner. She says, everybody's going to go knocking on the doors and say, I just need a word. I just need a word. All you got to say is Yahuwah. That is his name forevermore. Acts chapter four, verse 12. Nor there is... Nor is there uh, salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among, among men by which we must be saved. And we, oh my God, we use that term Jesus Christ so loosely. But let me ask you a question. What is the difference between the Jesus Christ of Catholicism, Jesus Christ of Christianity, Jesus Christ of uh of uh, Mormonism, and what is the difference between Jesus Christ and being a Jehovah's Witness? You want to know the answer? None. They're all the same guy. Yeshua separated himself from those mighty ones in order for him to say, Father, they're going to use our names, but yet we need to separate ourselves for a remnant son, a remnant daughter that is going to represent our name here on this earth. They're going to go through chastisement. They're going to go through the fire. But at the end, we they still have my name because they honored it. Every time we mention his name, there is a he opens the book of remembrance and says, Ah, my son, my daughter has used my name at this time, at this day. He will never, he will never leave you nor forsake you because you use his name. Continuing on, while pagans called on the names of their deities, meaning Baal or Asher, clearly there must be a distinction in what we call our creator. Baal means Hebrew, Lord. Clearly, Lord is not the true name because we are calling upon, as we said in the Terabyte, a God of fortune. Amen? Let me get us some water. 
Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 reveals that Yahuwah's name will be on our foreheads. So what do we want on our foreheads? Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 commands us to think upon Yahuwah's name. But historically, neither Judaism nor the church have been thinking on the name. Now, in Psalms 8, 83, 16 through 18, Yahuwah commands us to seek his name. Let's turn there. Psalms chapter 83, verse 16 through 18. And this is powerful because I want you guys to track with me. Psalms chapter 83, verse 16 through 18 says, let me read right here. Fill their faces with shame, O oh, that they may seek your name, O Yahuwah. Let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be put to shame and perish. Let that they may know that you, whose name alone is Yahuwah, are the most high over all the earth. And if you look at the King James Version Bible, you actually see that it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That is a substitution or is what we've learned in replacement theology terms that the name the Lord or the title of the Lord has been replaced so many times that you actually see the Lord is not the real name, but we use it as the pinnacle of our salvation. So when we say, Lord, we're thinking we're calling upon the mighty Yahuwah. We're not. I'm sorry. We're calling on a pagan deity. And don't get mad that I tell you this, but this has to be spoken out loud to the ears and to the eyes of the listener. Let me get some more water. So when you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in the Old Testament and even in the New Go to your Hebrew lexicon. Go to your Greek lexicon. We use uh, here at the uh, H2HDI uh, studylight.org uh, for organization. And that gives you the DBD lexicon. That gives you Jeff Brenner's Paleo Hebrew lexicon for you to help to. And those are tools for you to help research how you can study the scriptures more on a daily basis so you can learn how to hear more with clarity, with distinction, no to uh, Jew jiving, none of that. You're going to hear it because we're here to help you and esteem you better than ourselves. Blue Letter Bible is another tool that we use. Uh, it's a website that you can use. It goes both in Paleo Hebrew, well not Paleo, excuse me, but goes into modern Hebrew. But I use Study Light to help me dissect more. Both Apostle and I, we uh, use that website to actually go further more in depth of what the scripture is saying. Don't take what you read uh, face value. Go a little deeper. That's how we came to the sudden realization the name Jesus is not the real name of the Savior. So think about that because 1611, it was in print in the King James or King James Version Bible that the letter J was introduced. And you see in the scriptures right there in the 1611 print, the letter J was introduced as Esuus, then changed the next year as Jesus. So Sila, think about that. So continuing on. Psalms 72, 17, and that was the one I was looking for, and that was the one I had right here. Psalms chapter 72, verse 17, it says, His name shall endure forever. His name con shall continue as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him, or baruched in him. All nations shall call him baruched. Blessed be Yahuwah, the Yah of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And Baruch be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his kabad or his esteem. Amin and Amin. Meaning foster that. His name will be preserved and it will go from generation to generation. Because the generation in which he seeks is a remnant that will represent his name we have the five r's here receive his name recognize his name refer back to his name respect his name and most of all represent his name so until we see each other again just want to thank you welcome you to h2hdi don't forget we're on rumble.com 
forward slash H2HDI, where we teach you and encourage you. Uh, and we're actually expanding from YouTube onto rumble.com platform because we have been uh, censored by saying the truth. Can you believe it? Yeah, man doesn't want to hear the truth, so they rather listen to a lie. But we as truth seekers, Torah seekers, we're here to tell the truth, to evict the lie, so therefore man will be made free. Not set free, but will be made free. Amen? So until we see each other again, don't forget to hit the like, the share button. We have uh, content such as Terabytes, hosted by Apostle Robert Gonzalez. He teaches you how to become a threat, a terror, and a revenger to the kingdom of darkness. And don't forget we have our Let Isha Speak, where she encourages you, all the women all over the world as Isha, women, wives, warriors, young women, old women, even daughters of the Most High. She encourages you with the Psalms, with the Proverbs, and she speaks life because every time Isha speaks, it's life. It's the life, the Zoe in Greek, but the Ruach in Hebrew, it's the life of the Father breathing in and through you this day. And don't forget, we have our Sabbath live stream every Saturday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And we are continuing on in the name. We have been, uh, Apostle Robert has been just going through uh, the return of the gods. Uh, and <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's dynamic because it's opening me up more to say, okay, what other gods do you have inside of you that you be let become a mighty one? Could it be pride, arrogance, deceitfulness, lies? hiding behind your own soul, defending your own soul. And we've all gone through that, but we're here to help. We're here to equip you and edify you. In the name Yeshua. So until we see each other again, Shema Israel, uh, Shema Israel Yahua, Eloheinu Yahua Echad, Baruch Shem Kavor Makuta Lolom Vayed. Hero Israel, Yahua is one, and Israel is a promised seed of the Father made manifest, who was Jacob, but now is the promised Son of the Most High. So until we see each other again, Shalom, Shalom. Have a great day, great morning, great evening. Laila Tov, Bakr Tov, whatever time frame zone uh, you're watching this, Shalom to you.